Tom Flores is one of just two men in NFL history to win the big game as a player, an assistant coach, and as a head coach. People often refer to him in terms of his background. He's Hispanic. To the people of Sanger, Tom Flores is inspirational. Long before Tom Flores was the first Hispanic head coach to win the Super Bowl, he was known as Tommy Flores, a student athlete at Sanger High School in the 1950s. Flores played three sports, baseball, basketball, and football. He was Sanger High School's Senior Athlete of the Year in 1954. He grew up around football and he just, he's, you know, he played it, he coached it, uh, he was an assistant, he came through the ranks. I don't remember him really playing, but I remember him when he became a, a, a coach of uh, the Super Bowl champion Raiders. So I thought that was like pretty amazing. And then, uh, you know, sure enough, he would come visit and everything. We said, hey, we, you know, we know that guy, he's from Sanger. So is Chuck Shadan. Sanger's head football coach for 27 years, 1990 through 2016. Every single one of his teams played its home games at Tom Flores Stadium. We say, you know, you're playing at Tom Flores Stadium. This is just not, you know, just another place. So I think, you know, kids really, really, really respect that. And it's, it's very important. And it's, you know, it's the tradition. Clovis has La Monica Stadium, but there's not too many places you could go play where you're, you're going to play in a place that you know so well known as Tom Flores. The stadium was dedicated on May 16th, 1981, less than four months after Super Bowl 15, when Tom Flores led the Oakland Raiders to a 27-10 win over the Philadelphia Eagles. That's the first Super Bowl I remember watching as a kid, and I what I do remember is watching the pregame and there were cameras in town, driving through town, talking about Tom Flores, driving through his old neighborhood. And quite honestly, that's a very vivid thing in my, in my mind even to this day. When I think of Tom Flores, I think of the time, the Super Bowl pregame uh, cameras in my town, my little town here, you know, talking about Tom Flores. Where I grew up was uh, the opposite side of him, but it's what we would consider to be the poor section of the town. So I could relate to that. I could see that, hey, you know, look at this guy. He, he came up from, uh, from the same place as I came up, and he's, he's the head coach of a Super Bowl team. So it's somebody as, as, you know, that looked like me that I could look up to. Years later, Leo Castillo joined the Tom Flores Youth Foundation. And what we do is we provide funds for our, for our, our elementary schools and our middle schools. And we give about $1,500 um, for science, arts, and uh, athletics, uh, 1500 each year, and it rotates every, th every three years. Our Hispanic role, we have 75%. He knows that he came out of some place that was, that was difficult, and he knows that if he could do it, others can do it. He always wants our kids to do the best they can. I think he's so much more, too, than the athletics of what he's done for our community. We have a uh, district award, K through eighth grade. It's the Tom Flores Award, and it is probably the most prestigious award that our district gives out and it's given to a student um, at every school site K through eight that shows an all around um, strong character. It is a, a very prestigious award that families and students are so grateful when they're able to be recognized. I've got a little grand nephew and he actually won the Tom Flores medal for his school. And he won that little medal, and it was just so inspiring for him to think Tom Flores, you know, that he can wear that little medal and that he represents what Tom Flores represents. Which is more than the 92 touchdown passes Tom Flores threw in his six seasons as quarterback of the Raiders. More than the 105 games he won as head coach of the Raiders and Seahawks. I'm Hispanic, you know, you take a look at my color, and in, back, in the, back in the 60s and 70s and the 80s, there was not that many uh, role models. The role models weren't there. The people weren't there uh, for you because people had to break, break those barriers, had to break those barriers, and Tom broke those barriers. Tom did it because of his ability and the kind of drive that he had. He broke those barriers for so many of us. He was very proud of being from Sanger. He was proud of what the foundation did in Sanger. I don't, I don't mean to denigrate uh, Al Davis, but I think he got a lot of credit for what Tom did. Tom Flores, the Iceman. When I first was getting to know him, uh, I was like kind of intimidated or anything, but if you get to know him, he's just he's just a guy from Sanger that, you know, uh, went on a great path. He's the Iceman. Yeah, and he, uh, he, he was just, he's a cool customer, and that's kind of how he is. He, he's just a really uh, cool, laid-back guy, but obviously a great football mind. In the near future, the city of Sanger is planning two ways to honor Tom Flores. One of the streets in town is going to be named Tom Flores Boulevard. And thanks to a donation from a car dealership, there will soon be a statue of Tom Flores.